John's first epistle, 1 John, not to be confused with the Gospel of John, but back at the end of the New Testament, 1 John chapter 4. And I want to begin reading with uh, verse 9. keep thinking I should have some announcements, but I don't have any announcements. So nothing to tell you about. Are you getting enough signal and everything, Elliot? Yeah. Okay. Okay. First John. Chapter 4, verse 9. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Here in His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us, and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love <coughs> one another, God dwells in us, and His love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in Him, and He in us, because He hath given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father hath sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in Him, and He in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in Him. <coughs> Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Now, there are lots of things in this passage to talk about, lots of things we could talk about, but there's just two things I want to focus on in this. And the first thing is the last thing we just read in verse 19. He said something earlier that's very much like it. I want to link it to it. But he concluded in verse 19, or at least I concluded, <coughs> stop reading there, we love him because he first loved us. And if we could think that, you know, if we could say that, the goal or you know the desirable end is that we should love God uh, he tells us that we love him and he tells us why the word because there means uh, for this reason here's why here's why we love God why do we love God because it says he first loved us now um, this is so different it may not be uh, just to read that it may not seem so striking and, and revolutionary to you, but I guarantee you this was striking and revolutionary to John's hearers in the first century. Now, many of him were Jewish by upbringing. Because uh, this is so different than the Old Testament law. In the Old Testament law, uh, those who were under the Old Testament law, and you notice how I said that, those who were under the Old Testament law, meaning the nation of Israel, uh, the Old Testament law was never given to the whole world. Moses didn't uh, give the law, the Ten Commandments, or the rest of the law to the world. He gave it to Israel. It was to a specific group of people for a limited period of time. But to those people under the law, they were commanded to love God. Uh, there was a command, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul. It was a commandment to love God. And still, even you know, after I've said all that I said and we read this, uh, I think that's the thought that's in many Christians' minds. I've been to Bible studies before. See, I, I've been on both sides of this thing. I've been the one doing the talking, but I've been on the receiving end. <laughs> and I've been to Bible studies before where the, the person in charge, in a very kind of forceful tone of voice, says, We've, we are commanded to love God. Kind of like pushy like, you know. You're commanded to love God. You must love God. You know, I don't know about you, but anytime you're sort of push that way, you, the response is you want to push back. <laughs> like, oh yeah, we'll make me. <laughs> that's kind of the, the response. But you know, that's, that's important. Because that is the very purpose of the law. To act as a catalyst. To bring that response out of us. <laughs> to show us that there's something in us that a command comes and brings an opposite response. 
And see, we can't help that. That's what's in us. But God comes in the New Testament to change us, to change that. And in the New Testament, now, John writes to us. He doesn't say we love God because we're commanded to love God, and if we don't, He's going to throw us into hell. He says we love Him because, he says, He first loved us. He said that's why we love God, because He did something first. Because Not that He came and said you better or else, because He loved us first. Now, this thought, we love Him because He loved God, back up with me just for a moment, something He said earlier in the passage. Um, in what I uh, started with, verse 9. Verse 10, I mean. Herein is love. Not that we love God. You see, that's what he said. We love Him because He first loved Him. This is the love, in other words, I'm talking about. Herein is love. Not that we, it's not that we love God. See, even though with the, under the Old Testament they were commanded to. It's not that we were successful, in other words. Not that we love God and then He responded. It's that He loved us. That's what this kind of love is about. He loved us first. We just read that. So I can put that in here. It's not that we love God first. It's that He loved us first. And He did something all on His own to show His love. See, He says He sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Back in verse 9, He says this way, In this was manifested the love of God toward us. See, He's saying it's not that we love God. He loved us. He loved us first. We love Him because He loved us first. And it says, He showed or manifested or revealed His love for us because He sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. So the first point I want to attract your attention to is it's not that we were commanded and we obeyed. It's that He came and loved us first. He, he loved us uh, first. You know, it's very interesting if, if you understand what, if you can accept what I'm saying. This will enlighten a whole lot of other things that you've read earlier in the Gospels. And, I was, as I was reading these, it reminded me of a passage that I'd read, and, and this is a little side thought. I'm going to have you look at this. Elliot will put it on the screen. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 13, and uh, verse 28, I think is what I want. Mark 13, 28. You've probably read this story or heard this story before, but, but think about it in the light of what I just said. Mark 13. No, that's not what I want. Uh, I must have the wrong chapter. Maybe I got the wrong uh, 12. I'm sorry. Mark 12. I, re I misread it. Even with these glasses on, I misread the 12, thought 12 was at 13. Yeah, there you go. One of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, that is Jesus, he said, to, this is a scribe talking to Jesus, and he says, which is the first commandment of all? In other words, that means which is the most important commandment? The most, what's the most important commandment of all? And by the way, there's, there's hundreds of commandments. So he's saying, what's the most important one? You know, that, that'd be a logical thing to think about when you're living under hundreds of commandments. What's, if we're going to put these in priority here. So he says to Jesus, what's the first or the most important commandment of all? Okay, so Jesus gives him an answer. Jesus answered, said, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Now, as I said, under the law, they're commanded to love God. Remember what John said, though. He said, we love him because he first loved us. But this scribe came and asked Jesus, Jesus, what's the most important commandment? All right, I want to talk about the first commandment, the most important one. It's that you must love God. Okay, look at the next verse. The second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So, love in two directions. You love God, love your neighbor. There is none other commandment greater than these. Speak in terms of commandments, which are most important. Now look at what the scribe answered. This is what's interesting. And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Next verse. When Jesus saw that he answered discreetly. Now, this is an interesting word, discreetly. He answered wisely, but also showing that he knew more than he was necessarily saying. That's what the word discreetly implies. That he un had an understanding of something beyond just the surface discussion of commandments. He said Jesus perceived that he answered discreetly. You understand what discreetly means? That means when you're careful about what you say, 
because you know more than what you're saying. You understand what I'm